we said the stewardship or a steward is a person who manages another person's property. So if you, have, you own the farm and you are running the farm, you are not a steward, you are an owner. But if it is somebody who owns the farm and you are put there, you there to manage it, then you are called a steward. And I will not repeat yesterday someone because I was told it was recorded. So please look for part one of this of this discussion by going to whoever makes them available. Fred is also to get the reference of yesterday. Yeah, yeah, sure as me, you can get it. So I don't have to repeat there. So yesterday I was trying to define what stewardship is. And I think it's not fair for me to to, to now that there is recording, for me to spend time again repeating it when you can actually go to it. But our theme verse is in First Corinthians chapter 4. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. For who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? Let me repeat the verse again. What do you have that you did not Receive. What's the answer to that? Give me the answer. I'm not talking about now others. I'm talking about you yourself. What you have, you did not receive. Is there anything you have, you did not receive from God? Yes or no? No. That's why we then say, and we said last night, anything you have, a gift, if you are gift for, you are just a steward of beauty. Because God has made you beautiful for a reason. And it means that if you are beautiful and you are misusing your beauty, the owner of your beauty will hold it to account. Am I communicating? Although I'm not dealing with what we dealt with last night. So if you are a beautiful girl and you are just messing up boys, you pretend like you are interested, then you drop them. Now, if you if that takes what you do with your beauty, you have become an expert in tropology. Now, if that's what you have become, and there are some people you drop and have to so drop, by the idea, you have drunk about 50 of them. Now, you need to understand, you are a bad steward of your beauty. Are we together? Yeah. Someone's answer, they simply answer. Anywhere they go, comes up, are like, what a price. Because God has given them a kind of a person eh? That allows you to attract them. That's a gift. God wants you to attract you use it. Yeah. You just make a girl think that you're interested in them. Then you drop them. And then you say, when are you proposing? Me proposing? Where can you go? And then you have an eye to suggest she was the one. <laughs> you are misusing a gift of God. That's what we were saying last night. To understand everything you have is a gift from God. And the owner of the gift will hold it to account for how you use it. It's the same thing with being born again. When you are born again, it's a gift. Many people do not know. And that's why I'm really crying for testimonies. Because people don't even seem to know the difference between being saved and not being saved. They just think the difference is that you attend church and I don't. Testimonies are what will help us to see. And I can tell you for me, having been born again for just about 60 years, I'm, 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 I'm in my 70s, just in case I go, you think I got saved before I was born. No. <laughs> <laughs> I got saved in 1960s. I did my KP in 1967, and I was already born again. Now, I can tell you four things that are a gift of being born again. Number one, is assurance of heaven. In fact, the thing that God is in was the fear of going to hell. The people made it all clear. I, I, I can't want to go there, so I ran to Christ. Do you know for sure, as soon as I gave myself to the Lord, I now don't fear death. I now know if I were to die today, where I would go. You know, many people do not enjoy earth because they don't know about heaven. My book on the secret of contentment says, until you are sure about eternity, 
you never enjoy living. Every time you have a toy, you think it's cancer. And until the doctor tells you otherwise, you are dying alive. Now, you need to understand, when you become a Christian, death is no longer frightening. It's not a wonderful gift. Number two, when you get saved, you understand clearly, you are right in God's hands. I got saved as a young man. One of the things, one older person, and because of the very school, one the older person, they thought they needed to talk to me. They said, you are getting saved at this age, you are doing well in school. Do you know if you get saved, there are no girls who, who, who love the Lord. You get one of those old women to become your wife. <laughs> and for a while, the devil used to frighten me, either. This is to me, in the fellowship. Now, <laughs> then I remember, God is interested in me, even more than I'm interested in, in him. He loves me. So, when it is time to marry, and I've been married for the next 10 years or so. When it's time to marry, God will bring me somebody to marry who is appropriate for me. The group of Genesis call him a suitable helper, isn't it? So, for sure, why is that worry? So, because I'm sure the pastor wanted me to excite, I gave myself to the Lord. Sure enough, the pastor I was married was a kid in our university, was in Makere. So I was not going to meet her. When I was just about that year finishing, and I had not met her, because she was from Eastern Province, I'm from Central Province, we never had really seen each other. Jomo Kenyatta issued a presidential decree that all Kenyans must leave Uganda because of Idi Amin and come back to Kenya. And because Makenya was a Northern University, if there are courses that are not available in Nairobi, the government will pay anywhere in the world. That's how I met a cacao called Rebecca. <laughs> Because of a presidential decree. When the Lord wants you to be the person you are married, He may make the president issue a decree. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not telling tell a story, I'm telling you the reality. See, Rebecca has been here before. I think she was here not too many years ago, Dr. Rebecca Nana. Is, and, and, and I met her just for a red purpose. Because the president. Made her cover, I could see. I'm not So, can you see the value of getting saved? You know, I'm saying, I, you don't need to come down to somebody to marry. No, don't worry. When it's time to marry, if the girl is in Russia, you will take two things which you are not done. All Kenyans. Back. I'm not complicating. That's who God is. Can you imagine? If you're not a Christian, you don't have that chance. That's why you keep going back up, back up, back up. Now you are back there already. You are already approaching 20. Now you don't have that. <laughs> you don't have the assurance. Am I crazy? Now you are again, you are going like that. I will not finish my summer. I just want to tell you the gift of salvation. And how it's valuable, not just in future, but now. Can you imagine having that gift? Having that secret? And it's a top secret, you are first made to not know about it. Are you a good steward? Are you a good steward and you're not sharing with others? No. So you need to understand that when you talk about witnessing, tell people about Jesus, it's because one day you will be asked by God, how did you manage the gift of salvation? You can go on and on, but what do you have? that you are not given. But quickly, I want to just tell you the benefits of being a steward. The moment you accept that nothing you have belongs to you, it actually belongs to God, and you are managing it for God, and the people of the past are saying everything, not something but everything. The moment that concept enters your heart, and you start looking at life, not as a loner, but as a steward. Number one, you will never suffer from pride. And if I have enough time, I will talk about pride. Pride is one of the worst things that can happen to anybody. When you are proud, you will be friendless. Because you see, when you are proud, you just think about yourself, you talk about yourself, you will get tired of yourself. So you wonder, I'm so beautiful, but the boys are not away from me. They think they can't see my nose and my ear. What's wrong? It's simply they can't stand your pride. Are we together? The worst thing 
can have God called to you is to be proud. And you know, when you become a steward, and you start understanding your birthday is a gift of God, you no longer have any pride. Because you know that God who has given you that beauty is also the one who gave the ugliness to the other person. He is being the ugly. It's not, you can't blame them for being ugly. Because if you just that you cannot be proud for being, you, am I not going to You start understanding what you have. Okay, you pass very well. No matter you are passing. But then you are getting your habits who fail the glory colors. <laughs> you do pass in pride once, isn't it? So they fail with glory colors. But you realize it's a gift of God. So you are living with them. You don't relate like from top to bottom. You know this is my cousin, this is my friend. And what I have is a gift. And God has not given him this gift, but he has given him another gift. So relationship in stewardship, relationship in proof. Because you never deal with the people down top. You happen to be a work for a multinational company, right from the junior to, to the top leadership. But at no time did the pride enter me. Why? I knew as I was promoted from one grade to the other, it's a gift of God. It's not something to be proud about, to be bragging about. So I remember, in fact, I started a fellowship um, you know, in, in the company, I work for Shell, and I started a fellowship in 1984 for us to be able to fellowship as Christians. When I reached, when I reached top management, somebody said, well, will you still be there in the fellowship? I said, why not? Because fellowship is during lunch hour, and all stomach get angry during lunch hour. So even post the source of all for lunch, isn't it? So it's not going for lunch hour, come for the fellowship. Because you start understanding that without your promotion, your riches, your whatnot never get you proud. You are able to remain with everybody irrespective of the gifts God has given you because you know they are just gifts from God. Can you see the value of stewardship? Because it's not to us, it's not to God. Pride disappears. Maybe, maybe I should use these three as examples. Assume I have a million shillings, I actually don't. Assume I have a million shillings. And I intend to give you some of it until, uh, until December. But January of us, you must return my money. But just to feel how, how to have a lot of money is, I will give you. Um, you look like you are not very good in business. I don't see how, how you can do with the money. So out of a million, I'm just going to give you a hundred thousand. It's not that I hate you, but just, just understand. You know, such a business girl, I'm going to give you 800,000. So what am I left with? Another 100,000. Please accept it. So these three people, two have 100,000, one has 800,000. But you hardly tell it then, that it doesn't belong to them. It is mine. And of course, they are going to be done. If you make this girl be proud, that I want to be on there. If you make her be proud, would you think she's very clever? She just remind her. But that is not her story. She's like telling me. What do you pray? Be proud about it. Who say, Mugabe Wene, the Murugia Kiko, somebody else is doing it. It's temporary on him. It will be returned back to the owner. So why would you be proud when you know that on fact, the temporary you are gay people? Now, this is only a temporary allocation. Can you see what stewardship does? The reminder is not yours, it has a loaner. You meet this girl, screaming very unhappy. Mama, just give me a hundred She is suffering from inferiority complex. Why? She got so little. What did she, what did she see to give her a whole hundred thousand and give you only? Now, when you start hearing her complaining, you tell her, wait a girl. Don't you know the 100,000 is not yours? Just the 800,000 is not hers. You are both equal. I mean, in terms of gender, anyway, you will be equal. Can you see why you cannot suffer from inferiority complex? The moment you are a steward. And I know that because the way back I was called by some rich men to give them a talk at which I'll tell. I went, and they are, when you are talking, you realize you are out of place. You are talking about, oh, you know, you 
that you are one might say, when you go for shopping, let's say, uh, some I think we have some in When you go for shopping, let's say, some I say, I went to France. No! I went to New York. It was a waste time to go to Paris. Now, I looked at my wife, I have even taken an Mombasa. And you know what I And remember, in a few minutes, I will be talking. Can you see the prosperity of my legs having courage? <laughs> but they did it. Why? Uh, I know the reason God called me here is because there is something in me that is not. Then they knew I am not rich. Because the people who are rich are not by them. They are in that class. But they knew I have something I can talk to them that can make their life better. So they stand up. <laughs> I'm not suffering from reality. Because I know God has given you more money, but it's money. So I don't get frightened by your presence. I don't have a problem with your Complex. I sit here. And you have an A. And I have a daughter C in the same class. And I don't say why. <laughs> God, I know I work very hard. And God so best to give me a C. I'm grateful to him. I think God would be a good aminati. I'm grateful to God for giving me a C. So I don't feel, I don't know from your complex when I'm dealing with a less student and I'm a C student. As long as I know I need my best. Can you see the value of worship? Understanding is a gift of God. So, when you become a steward, you therefore don't suffer from pride, so you don't suffer from superiority complex, but you also don't suffer from inferiority complex. Number three, when you become a steward, understand the meaning of worship, you, you enjoy contentment. You learn to enjoy not just the destination, but the process. It's a very, very important thing. They have written a whole book on the secret of contentment. And the moment you understand God is the provider, then when He gives all He gives you, you cannot let stay in a bed sitter. I've heard of a bed sitter. Anyway, we are living in Papa Sue, so you understand a bed sitter. A bed sitter in Arabi is like a house where everything is visible. You visit. One corner is called a bedroom, the other corner is called a kitchen, the other corner, you can see it all when you enter. The job with a bedroom is that, with a bed sitter is that you can't allow your mother to visit if you are a boy. Because you can't be there together. Now, that's a story for another day. But that's called a bed sitter. When you have a bed sitter, you know the gift of God. So you are grateful to God. After all, some people are staying with their hands because that their hands, they don't have the freedom. But God has been good to you. He has given you a bed sitter all by yourself. When God is making you go, you are going to stand in your house without having to seek any more provision. Say, Hallelujah, God, you are very good. For three reasons. Number one, the gift of God. Number two, you know when God wants you to, to be in a bigger house, He will provide the money for the bigger house, isn't it? And number three, you know those things don't define you. You are a, you are a great man in a bed sitter. And you will be no bigger in a three bedroom house. You are still the same guy. Your value is not related with the size of your house. Am I complicated? Because you start understanding there is somebody in you who is different from the things you have. And it allows you to enjoy your contentment. Okay, somebody says, but you're very angry. Now, I agree, I'm angry. According to your measure. But beauty is there or there? Beholder. The problem is not me. The problem is the beholder. And it's you. <laughs> so you have a problem with my sight of my nose. Shall we? Shall we have one? So I don't, I don't get frightened by what you say. I have a sense of contentment. I accept myself the way I am. After all, God never gave me a consultancy on how to believe me. He built me without my participation, isn't it? So I accept myself the way. I am. I'm not very So you can criticize me, but it's a waste of I only enjoy myself the way I am. And please note there's something. All oh, boys may agree you are the echuka. <laughs> but after all, they are not candidates for marrying you. <laughs> you need to understand. <laughs> you need to understand when it's a time to marry, there will be somebody. See, 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 my, the, you see the English man says, Peter is in the the beholder. There will be somebody who does not worry that your nose is so long. They will accept you the way you are. Because God will bring them, including ordering the president to bring them to where you are. Am I going to Can you see that will give you a sense of enjoying your life? It is true, people fear 
That's why you have that set of stewardship. That you are likely to become somebody who is not hardworking. No. You here are in industry and have what right from a junior person right to the top leadership team of the biggest oil company in Kenya. Because when you are steward, something I have not told you so far is that you know you don't work for your boss. You work for heaven. Romans, uh, sorry, Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, 17 to 25, but look at verse 23. We don't work for the masters, you are for God. So you, whatever you have to do, you do it to the Lord. Colossians 3, 17, whatever you, whatever you do it, do it as unto the Lord. It means that every Christian will be hardworking, even if the boss is unreasonable, even if the lecturer is hopeless. When you are given an assignment, you are not doing for that open as a lecturer, you are doing it for God. So you will do it, you are very, very, I'm not going to get it. And although initially they may be unhappy with your Christianity, when they realize, they know which side their bread is battered. They know you are not putting to their bottom line. They will promote you a member, was it very, I'm not going to get it. Because you will be hardworking. Please understand, contentment does not mean you are not hardworking. It means you still want to go up there where the Lord is leading you to go, but you enjoy the journey. Are we together? Because you go, and that's what you get when you have when you live a life of, of stewardship. You understand that God is interested in you. So we have said you end up in a better relationship, whether single or married, and you'll be freer to give what you possess. And I think we mentioned that yesterday. And I think it's important to, to just remind ourselves. So you can see this is a topic, unfortunately, every time people talk about stewardship, they like making it like it's a giving day. As if the only thing God gives us is money. God has given us many, many things. See, the man says, whatever you have, you have been given. It's not what you have. It means you're not just about money. Stewardship, money is not one of the many aspects. And if you read my book, you will see how I try to go to many, many chapters. So let's look at them. If you are a steward, it will sustain your efforts because you never give up. Look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. Now that I speak in respect of one, not that I speak of respect, for I will have learned in whatever state I am, there is uh, to be content. What we are saying is stewardship helps you not to be affected by the things around you. You live a life of satisfaction and a life that's honoring to God. Do not be afraid if you reach the end of the road because God will open yet another road. So you never suffer the frustrations as you go through various challenges. You know very well, the way things are looking, school looks like you run out. And you know the trouble when you start thinking if you are, you are, you are right dependent on your parents. And you can see your parents are getting poorer and poorer. Compared to how poor they were in first year, by now they are even well, all of a sudden you feel like you don't finish campus because you are thinking your provisions come from your parents. Don't you understand? Your parents are not the source. Where, do you, where does our help come from? From the Lord. A steward understands that even though it's the mother who sent pocket money, it was God who gave her to give to me. I don't want to tell you this. If you didn't understand, just think about the, the, the way children are born. When my children are getting born, you are not, men were not allowed in that room. That, what is that room called? Where children are born? It's called a delivery room. And I keep telling you ladies, the reason they call it a delivery room is to invite the mother. She is not the owner of the baby. She only delivered. It's very important to understand. <laughs> you came from God, but delivered through your mother. So you are not, your mother may forsake you. But you are owned by God. I'm not going to So you understand them. Even if your parents are getting poor, if the Lord wants you to finish college, you will finish. How? He is the one responsible. Are we together? And last time, last time, last night I gave you a testimony about myself, did I? It's important to understand that when you become a steward, you start looking at people. It's the same thing. The reason why I have written another book called Integrity. The late master of good leadership. And I've shared my testimony of integrity challenges in Kenya. People keep saying, 
Kenya is corrupt. I agree with it, but that does not discard me. Every Christian is not allowed to be like other Kenyans. Because he is not just a citizen of earth or Kenya, he's a citizen of heaven. Are we together? So in the book I've shared my testimonies. And one of the things that happens is that people want to kill you. I remember somebody coming to my office and putting a card on the table, saying, you're affecting my car, you're affecting my, my, my contract, your children cannot continue eating when mine are not. And I just asked him, I know what you mean, but have you, do you come from a place where there are people who are saved? Have you heard of people who are saved? He was so annoyed with me. He said, eh. I said, if you have heard of them, they normally say they want to go to heaven. And they are here. He walked out of my office. Because he, he wants to fight and he is in Kiki. But Kiki is telling me to heaven. Who would hate going? To heaven. They told me they are not allowed to commit suicide. But you want to go to heaven. I'm not going to get it. Can you see the meaning of understanding? Your life belongs to God. And because it belongs to God, it cannot go there earlier than the day he wanted you to come. Of course, you have to use a method. You know, that's how we pray for someone who is sick. And we pray very hard. But if God healed all diseases, how will you take him to heaven? Sometimes he needs to use the disease to go to heaven. He does not fail to heal you another thing because he can't heal, but because he wants them in. I'm not communicating. So you don't sit there saying, oh, they'll kill me. They kill you, they send you to heaven. What's wrong with going to heaven? I'm not communicating. And one says, I'll buy I say, yeah, at your level, I was in middle management and he was in top management, the top five people. And I say, ah, I have, if you fired me, I have no appeal. The only thing I know is God brought me here. Only get, God can get me out of it. And when he uses you to get, when he uses you to get me out, he must be having another place, isn't it? He knows his children. My children are his children. And he knows they are in school, they need school fees. So you cannot get frightened. You live in peace. Even if people are threatening you, because you know you are alive. That does not belong to you, it belongs to God. And that's what we are talking about. The importance of discussing yourself from your roots, from your property, from the people who, who own you and start being owned by God. It will give you a lot of confidence to be able to stand your ground, not be corrupted by somebody else. Somebody says, I have a job, but I guess you sleep with me. I'm a child. Nobody gets employed here without me. If you want a job, you must sleep with me. Now, if you are willing to sleep with him to go out to get a job, you are just accepted to sleep with him to get a promotion. See, after the job, you want a promotion. You become a prostitute. So the best time to say no is as a beginning. Why do you say no? Because you look at him and say, sure. If you're not going to work in that company, some of them say you do not be here over my dead body. No, I would say, please don't say that. You are asking yourself. Because if the Lord wants me to be employed here, you must die. <laughs> With our body, Upende, was impende. That's the confidence of a child who is a steward. Understanding that you belong to God, and God can has never lost a battle. Has he? No. But you must surrender totality to him. So you don't give for an age to God. I thought of what kind of age you give him. But you know, I gave a bribe to get a job just to assist God. No. If God wants you to get a job, you will get it. What paid it? What he paid Because you belong to him. And your life concerns him. And it's a very, very important thing to, to, to understand. You know, stewards, therefore, lead a better, better performance in every area. You know, a steward serves his clients to the best of his ability to honor God, including the rude clients. Because you see, you are not giving the client good service because they are good. You are giving them to glorify God. And the more difficult a client is, the more you raise a test as to how Christian you are. So you will treat them. And he says, what's wrong? This girl continues treating me well. I continue being rude. Romans 12 says, when you love people who are not loving you, you are putting coals of fire. So fire will be burned. And it's important. So that can only happen when you stop being yourself, feeling how that is God will come back to me. The moment you start feeling like that, 
there is no way you will be a steward. A steward totally selling themselves to God. And therefore they can even serve difficult people. And serve them well. They did not even show partiality that because this one is from my tribe, I will serve them better. Because remember, God has placed in that job. It's a stewardship job. Every job you get is a stewardship area. And God will be accountable to how you did the job. And so you don't need to do it for your tribe. You will meet God finally, isn't it? And it's important to know that you cannot be a Christian steward and have trouble with you. Because you serve everybody with the idea that one day you will give an account on what you did with the gifts God gave you, including gifts of position. Every business for sure serves people. And nobody will pay you unless you serve them. However, you will serve God in the process. You know, Prophet Mount Amos talked of people who use wrong scales. So you, you are running a business and you look at this person, they don't look very clever. So you, you, you say a debe, a debe of potato to one person, they are the only thing to know. You put some stones at the bottom. Have you seen those tricks? Of course you find them. And you tell them, wake up a boot. You put the you put the potatoes and you remain with the with the stones. It's only when you deliver to your wife, you say, say, it is a food that yes, I saw it. But the guy tricked you. You have no idea. But one day you give an account to God, isn't it? The God will give them that business. So then you can see the implication of stewardship. We will end up with a better customer service. Uh, and I think that's a very important thing. Stewardship leads to better performance for sure. When you realize that you run your business for God, your clients will not will know the difference and you, in turn, you will see increase in your business. That's why when, when a Christian starts a business, because he treats people well, because they get value for their money, they are likely to keep coming and your business will increase. But the reason you are increased, you are doing it. Even if the business is not increasing, as long as you are there, you will do a good job. The same way, you are employed in a place. They are not giving you a promotion. Your salary is not very good. But as long as you are employed and you are keeping, you are a man who owns a contract. Even as you are looking for other jobs, you will still be doing a good job where you are. Are we together? And they must realize, losing you, you may be irreplaceable. Nobody else can replace you. And it's important to understand what that means. Isn't it? There's a saying, um, there's a saying, and I, I don't know, uh, there's a saying that that, uh, uh, that is in Kikuyu. It says, "Fuduama no In other words, all businessmen are liars. Don't trust them, except the one who deals with the hair. The one with the hair, if he tells you I'm cutting the hair, he never leaves it half done. Am I right? All the others, whether it's a car repair, you take a car to a mechanic, you come back after three hours, everything is done in it. You give your wedding dress to be repaired. And two days to the wedding, they are still working on the dress. Have you ever heard those? Just go to a Christian steward. Because they want God's name to be honored. When they tell you your dress will be ready on Wednesday, they work overnight on Tuesday to ensure they keep their work. To the glory of oh God. Can you see why customers will keep coming? Not necessarily because he's the best person in that industry, but because he keeps his word. Stewardship gives ability to separate yourself from your money. It's a very, very important thing. Many people feel more valuable when they have more money and less valuable when they have less money. And since more money and less money are no more currencies in life, they get hurt very easily. In fact, depression is a possibility. You know, many wives can tell the time of the month even without looking at the calendar. The husband arrives, slaps on the chair like he has a problem, and you see, you know, it just the man has gone to a corner, you know, we call it corner, around 20 something. You get the point? He has run out of money, and he has seen a whole week before the next salary. So he starts behaving in a manner as to show his right to become depressed. A Christian doesn't have that. Why? Because for him, money and him are not the same. He, he is able to suffer himself from money. Because you see, if God is the one who gives you money, 
then you know, even when you are normally, he still values you the same, the same way. And it's important that we talk about any office you hold is due to God's help. And it will be important. You know, I have to find a way of, of finishing. Um, and I want to, to, to finish by just looking at many additional problems are born out of pride. And you have agreed, and, and I'm concluding, that as you understand stewardship, you no longer have pride carrying you and leading you on. And because you will not suffer from pride, you will be able to serve the Lord better. And because you will serve the Lord better, you will bring honor and glory to you, to Him. And you will live a life of contentment. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, these are easy things to say, difficult to practice. They must begin by one totally surrendering himself to the control of Jesus as a master. It is that that will make them face life without fear, face life with contentment, face life without pride, face life without inferiority complex. Lord, I pray for everyone who is in this meeting that will give them that privilege of enjoying their life irrespective of what they are going through by accepting you. Just before I finish prayer, is there somebody say, Brother Nana, include me in your prayer. I am not born again. I don't know that peace you are talking about. I would like Jesus to be the, to take over the land of my life. Or maybe you to be saved, but you are free of late. You really are traveling on your own. And you really want to be a Christian steward who surrenders to God. Come back to God. He is going to give. Or maybe you are saved, but there is a certain aspect of your life that requires surrender. So that you can have that joy I'm talking about. Of understanding you and what you own are not the same. God values you. Whether you are part or little, he values you. And you enjoy the fact that God values you. Is that somebody saying, Brother Nana, could be in the prayer? Just put up your hand high enough for me to know there is somebody specific I'm praying for. The Lord bless you. Put that down. The Lord bless you. Put that down. Anybody else? The Lord bless you. Don't do that a second time. Somebody else? Yes, high enough. The Lord bless you. I've seen the hand. I have a tent. Put the hand high enough. The Lord bless you. Thank you very much. I've seen the hand. Thank you very much. This is the side of the tent. Put the hand high, high enough for me to see. Lord, you can see all these hands. My prayer is that for each one of these, your people, that Lord, you get the release of the knowledge you have taken over their future, whether charity or not charity, they know they belong to you. And so they will live in peace. Even as one day they go to heaven. Here on earth, to enjoy their life on earth, because you will take care of it yourself. Because they, they are totally surrendering to, to you only. Them. Lord, touch every one of them and help them to walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray.